filming. I'm filming too late. Oh my gosh, all of my hair. I have, I just shed. I shed like a Yeti, so it's bad. It's been a while, but welcome and welcome back to all of my old subscribers. Welcome to my new subscribers that have come on since I haven't filmed anything, which is kind of crazy. But this is episode I don't know, I will put it in. I think that I was on episode like 13, 13, maybe. I was on the double digits, but of Knit and Spin with Brie. So a lot of stuff has happened since the last time we chatted. I did Vlogmas up until like, I want to say the 19th of December last year. And then I stopped. I filmed through to the 24th. Did I publish? No. Life got in the way. It got a little crazy. And then I got very, like, stagnant and meh about things and children. Okay. Pardon the interruption for a second. My youngest started crying he was very upset and not to mention it's almost midnight here in Utah um so I don't know why he woke up suddenly he's been asleep for over an hour so it's kind of weird okay that's fine. so getting back to it I am completely out of practice with this whole thing. I don't even know if my mic's working. I don't know if my setup's right. We're just going to wing it. I did write notes, which is surprising. I haven't written notes for a podcast in a really long time, but I did it. I wanted to be more professional, but... All right, child is coming in again. All right, take three, I guess. Children keep getting up and they don't need to be up. Um, what was I saying? So it's been a very long time since I've done this, so I'm very out of practice. I don't know if any of my equipment's working. I haven't even turned on the freaking ring light. Hold on. I, I don't know if the ring light even really helps, but I have nice overhead lighting in my new craft room. And there was natural light coming from the window, but now that it is dark. Oh, God, excuse me, because it is past midnight, almost midnight. Here in Utah. Um, let's dig right in. Let me get my notes here. So, I already did the welcome backs. Let's go into FOs since last time we spoke. So, I did. I don't have this one with me, but I did the Comeback Cardigan by Susanna Winter, and I made it out of a Yak Silk Blend. 
Um, and it was beautiful and it was such a quick knit and I was very surprised. I did have to give the finished garment, I'll put in pictures. Um, I did have to give the finished garment to my mother-in-law because I am allergic to yak. I was breaking out in hives all over my arms and everywhere it touched my skin, which is very unfortunate because yak is very soft and pleasant to have against your skin. So that was a big bummer. So I had to give that one away. The next one is what I'm wearing currently. I'm, oh, sorry, touched the mic. Oh, I just keep touching it. Um, I'm wearing the Acacia cardigan by Irene Lynn. And it's like all over cabled lace uh, patterned cardigan. And I have, these are wooden buttons, but this was also, excuse me, this was also a really quick knit and I was not expecting me to, not expecting to just bust through it as fast as I did. But I finished this before the move, which was on June, it was June not June 3rd. It was June 6th is when we moved, which was Monday, which was a Monday, not this past Monday. Um, it's now July, <laughs> but yeah, I had finished it really quick. I think it took me about three, two and a half weeks maybe to finish. I was working on it monogamously. Uh, I didn't do anything with any other projects. I was just working on this and I, I loved working on it because it kept me interested the entire time. I love the balloon sleeves on it. I don't like, I'm figuring out that I don't like decreased sleeves. I like straight sleeves or balloon sleeves like oversized sleeves better than like tight sleeves. I end up decreasing or I never knit the size that I should be knitting, I guess. And the great, the decreases according to the patterns that I knit, they decrease too sharply or they decrease too much and it becomes very tight sleeve. And I don't particularly like that. I kind of like the loose oversized drapey puff sleeve. Um, even if it's like form fitting on the body, but I would rather have sleeves that are larger just because I have very obnoxiously long arms. So it would be nice to not have to knit super, super tight sleeves all the way down. But yeah, I love how this turned out. It blocked really nicely. This is... I know that the the yarn blend was, oh, no, I have it right here. Excuse me. Haydenville Valley Yarns by Webbs. And it's 60% superwash merino and then 40% acrylic. And the color is eggplant. And I love how it turned out. I definitely want to make another one. I don't know if you guys can see all the stuff that is around here, but there's been a lot of FOs since the last time. Oh my god, just keep yawning, which is not good. Okay, another FO. Did the comeback card again, the... Acacia cardigan. I did four pairs of socks within, I want to say, a two week period. Because I had all these Patton's Croy um, 
balls of yarn to make socks. And then I just got on like a super, sorry, they're like, I've used them. So they're like loosey goosey, but, and I haven't washed them. <laughs> I, they need to be washed, but I need these ones and these are all for me. So I have a bunch of wool socks now and I need to wash them all. But these pair, just, they went super quickly and I was really surprised. I'm just like, oh, I've made a pair of socks in like two, three days. That was really fast. And then these ones, these ones are a little bit more of a gradient colorway. I could not tell you the colorways because I did not keep the ball bands at all. But they're the Fatten's Croy sock yarn. This one's more of like a gradient blue, but it's, I did um, heel flop and gusset on all of these, which I'm finding that I actually like better than an afterthought heel. I thought that the afterthought heel was like the best fit for me. Jeez. Can't stop yawning. I'm filming too late. Oh my gosh, all of my hair. I have, I just shed. I shed like a Yeti, so it's bad. So that's another pair that was done. And then this pair, which I like, but it was very interesting, the color, colors that were involved. <laughs> this one I did a, uh, what's it called? Eye of Partridge heel? I think that's what it is. But it's like where you slip one and then knit one and then you purl all the way back and then you slip one knit one uh, offset. You can't really tell with the the coloring that I did that on these pair, but I um, I do like the eye of partridge heel, just like Fernanda from Little Monkeys and Me. She that's her favorite heel type, and I really love it too. I just always end up forgetting. Wait, did I slip this one or did I knit this one last round? And you're supposed to alternate. I feel like I have to write it down. If I don't, then it gets all messed up. And I'm pretty sure I messed up ish. Or you have to do it with like self striping or a solid instead of like um self patterning, like these ones are. There's these. And then these ones I absolutely love. I had made a pair. Let me put on the sock walker. I made a pair of socks out of this yarn for my aunt who lives here in Utah. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know how to say their name, but they are a Utah dyer that I got the last time that I purchased this yarn that came with um, a mini skein and I purchased the yarn here and it was a sock set and it was from oh I don't know how to say their name I I wanted to say Yarnosaurus but it, that's or it's Yarnaceous or it's something like that but it's got a little dinosaur on it and um I think it was Allie from, oh my gosh, she lives in Australia, Fiberbound. She got the same set, or it was Fernanda who got the same set and made socks out of it. And I was just, and I was watching their podcast, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I had that same set and I made socks out of it too. Actually, I made two pair of socks because these ones are for me and then the ones that actually use the mini skein were for my aunt but it's really soft I love the colorway and it's got really nice 
I couldn't tell you the colorway because I don't remember it. Um, but it's got like nice autumnal colors, but then like purple blues, pinks, and greens. And then I just used my um, own hand dyed yarn for the cuffs and toes. And it was an MCN blend, which is Merino Cashmere Nylon blend that I had hand dyed like forever ago. It was a sample skein. I didn't name it. It's clearly just purple. <laughs> well, it's a variegated purple. But yeah, I made all four skeins, or four skeins, four pairs within like a two week period. And I think it was between the end of Christmas last year and like the second, the first week of January, I just blew through socks. It was kind of crazy. And then I'm just like, oh, I should join like a sock week or, you know, sock madness or something like that. And no. And then I started some socks from the rest of the patents quarry that I had gotten or purchased. And then I've Then I've ripped. Oh. And then I have ripped it back four or five times, I want to say. Oh, I'm on the heel. Because it just started looking really big. I don't I don't I'm a very tight knitter, so when it came to socks, I was doing the 72 stitch round like 72 stitches on the cast on. And it looked okay, and then it was looking really big once I got to the knit section. I was like, did I suddenly become looser in knitting? And I would have to up my needle size or decrease the amount of stitches I cast on or increase the amount of stitches I would cast on to fit my size. and Because I have a size 10 shoe, which is huge but I'm I'm tall I'm pretty tall so yeah and I had started another sock and I literally ripped this out four or five times thinking it's too big it's too big it's not gonna work and I then put it in the timeout corner because I'm just like I'm not ripping it back again because I still think it's a little large without being worn so far because this looks like it's already been worn and stretched out so yeah i stopped that project it's in one of my little autumn doodlebug yarn co bags that i had made specifically for my alpaca my knit mitts pattern you could get the yarn the pattern and the bag with like stitch markers and such, and such as like a bundle if you purchased it. I don't know. I don't know if I have any more, but yeah. And this was clearly done on a, I, this is only a single because it was a test one, but it has like little hearts in between the alpacas instead of just alpaca, alpaca, alpaca. It's got hearts in between because I made a custom one for my mother-in-law. And this one's kind of small and tight, but that's what was shoved in there. Okay, what else did I finish? Okay, yes, right here. I put it right on the side. So when me and my family moved, I was starting to find a bunch of old projects that I had started and never finished. So before I started knit, well, no. I started knitting before I started crocheting, but crocheting I found to be faster, but used more yarn. So I crocheted for a very long time before I got back into knitting and I started doing like sweaters and things like that for knitting. But 
I think it was 2018. Oh my gosh. Count how many times I've yawned so far. I think it's like at six. I don't know. Comment below how many times I've freaking yawned so far. So when I was packing up, I found a project bag, but well, it wasn't really a project bag. It was one of those like reusable grocery bags that like fold into, not really fold, but like shove into a little tiny little bag. But I found this project that I had started and it's like a mandala pattern um, crocheted blanket and it wasn't finished. I mean, it's technically still not finished. It, it can keep repeating and creeping and go out to like king size bed, but I didn't want to go that far. <laughs> So I just continued for the rest of the skein that I was attached to and then onto a new skein partially. And this is Karen Cotton Cakes. I believe it's a blend of cotton and acrylic. Yeah, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And it's definitely like a worsted to Aran bulky weight. Um, so I have a bunch of those cakes. So I made this blanket and then it got to the point where I'm just like, I don't want to do it anymore. I just want to cast it off and be done or bind off and be done. So I started looking at it. And I was like, you know, it's actually a really good size for a baby blanket. And my twin sister is actually newly pregnant. So I'm like, baby blanket for the baby. <laughs> so this will be going to Liam, who, which is the name that they picked out. And she's like barely into her second trimester and I didn't realize that technology today they could figure out the gender this early I remember it being a lot later before I actually figure out the gender but they figured out the gender really quickly so it's a boy and it's gonna be Liam so Liam is getting a nice cotton blanket that is completely machine washable and my sister doesn't have to worry about hand washing anything Another finished project that I had done, it's actually kind of a UFO that became a whip to a FO. Actually, no, this one is very new because I started it. While here in Utah, this is the, I, I've shown these before. This is probably the 10th one that I've made. But it is the Sea Breeze Cover Up by Katarina. Um, I don't know her last name, but she now has she has she has revamped the pattern and has um, a knit and a crochet version. This is the crochet version, but it is made from. I have. Oh. I went to Hobby Lobby and got a bunch of their cotton cakes that they have, the Rainbow Rhapsody. And this one is Sapphire Blues um, colorway. And it's for my mother in law. That's so fast to crochet and you use almost the entire cake, but really quick. And. I had also picked up one, not picked up one, but I had started one about three years ago for a friend of mine, and then I realized that the colorway was just too pink, so I went with a different colorway, but I didn't stop the initial one, and I had hand beaded around the yoke, um, so I had picked that one back up again, and I had started doing it. And finishing it out and I'm like oh this will be from the aunt that lives here 
And that one was the Slate Divide colorway of Rainbow Rhapsody, which is like, it goes from a white baby pink and then like graduates to a deep gray. And it's, it's pretty, I don't have it anymore because I obviously, I gave it away. I gave it to her. So she could use it while at the pool. Excuse me while I. I might have to pause to go to the bathroom because I've, it's just been, there's so much stuff to go through. Okay, that's it for finished objects, I believe. Unless I'm forgetting something. We'll do spinning later because I've spun a lot as well since last time we spoke. Um, especially all of the fiber that I got from Stitches when I vended at Stitches West in um, Sacramento this past year. No, this year. It was back in February. Um, but I've done a lot of spinning as well. We'll go into whips. So in terms of whips and things that I have on the needles currently, I have the It's called the Campana Cardigan, the Campana Cardigan by Alice Smith. And I'll put a picture in, but it's it's a simple I'm working on the sleeves. As soon as I split for the sleeves, I'm doing something different this time. I do a little bit of the body, switch over to the sleeves and start working on the sleeves. And then it's just body island, and then it's just like finished. But this is how much I have so far. It's got a beautiful lace motif down the sleeves, which is what keeps me interested. Because the, the body is literally body all the way down. Stocking it. But the lace pattern that's on the sleeves, it's what's keeping me very interested and keeping me going, oh, I just want one more repeat, one more repeat. Um, but I haven't worked on it since we've moved. And I think that I might run out of yarn, actually. And the yarn is Willow and Lark Poetry. Uh, it is a mix of fine merino, camel hair, and acrylic. Yeah, so 60% wool, 10% camel hair, and 30% acrylic. It's in a very nice, like, foresty green, and it's, it's, it's soft. It's nice. Haven't worked on it in a while. We'll get back to it, but, again, <laughs> I've, other things have caught my fancy. Um, what's the next on my list here? Okay. I also started, sorry, moving things around. My, this actually is a gift knit. It's for my new neighbor that lives just right next to me. We've bonded over the last year of, they bought their, they bought their house. We had bought our house. We did the whole design studio thing and like it all came down to like the fencing in the backyards in Utah it's required that every in a new development if you are required by the developer or the builder to make the fencing in the backyard you are required to split the costs between all your neighbors so to the left and right of you and behind you so we connected really, really early and we had just, we did all of the 20 questions, like got, got to know each other. And now we see each other almost every day. We text every day and she's amazing. 
And as soon as I finished the sweater, she's just like, oh my gosh, I would love a sweater or something like that. Or that would, I would be so great if I could knit like that. Or I would love to learn how to knit. And I told her, I'm just like, I would love to teach you. Um, I would love to make something for you if you would enjoy it. And she's just like, yes, definitely. So I had cast on, I sent her a bunch of pattern ideas and it's currently living in my De La Q, um, I think it's called like a train bag. I, I don't remember exactly what they called it, but I got this at Stitches West and I love this thing like a lot. You can literally shove like a bunch of stuff in it and it's got cute, it's got um, holes to feed your yarn through. Uh, if you want to keep it closed and you have your project out and you're just feeding the yarn through. Um, has a little tray. And the tray is magnetic. So like all your stitch markers and stuff will just stick to the bottom. Which I love. It's on the ground. So this one, I've been kind of on a roll. It is the dead of summer here in Utah and it it is hot like really warm <laughs> so yes it snows here but it's also very dry during the summer so it gets really hot uh, but I have already finished one sleeve I'm doing the same technique that I'm doing with the other one where I get past the sleeve separation, do a little bit of the body, and then switch to doing the sleeves first, then the body. It's a lot of it's a lot less fabric to kind of maneuver as soon as you you do the sleeves early and then you do the body later. Um, but I'm almost finished with the second sleeve actually. I did a lot of it at my new job, which. They allow me to knit at my desk, which is just so nice. Yeah, I want to say I'm about three, four inches away from doing the cuff on the second sleeve. And then I can just, it's just body island. And then it's blocking. But yes, this is the Whitmore. Uh, the Whitmore sweater by Amy Loden. And the yarn is, let me see if I can get, Fedra Natural, Natural, and this is a lace weight. It's 70% superwash wool, 30% silk. Uh, it's called Whisper Lace, and I got it off webs. And I paired it with a mohair, which is um, Southampton Valley Yarns Webs, 72% mohair, 28% uh, mulberry silk. And it's a blue, so I just paired it and I'm holding the two strands together for the whole knit. And it's lovely. I have to say, I did not like working with mohair before when I was doing my best friend Hannah's um, shawl that I knit her. It was the first time I ever worked with no mohair and it was, it shed a lot. But I haven't had any problems like that with this um, brand of mohair silk blend, which is really nice. And it's still, it's really soft. It's going to be nice and cozy warm during the winter but it's really hot during the summer here uh but also at stitches when i purchased the um de la q bag they also had like spinning aprons or like frocks they're like linen um aprons that have like pockets and this one has a cute little flower on it and I am planning on using this while I spin dye and all the, oh I have a bunch of business cards in the pocket I can feel them um 
Yeah, and I love using that. I have not dyed anything since being in the new house, but I am looking forward to setting up my dye area and then starting to dye again because I have more space here so I can fill in some more spaces and I'm not limited as much anymore. Uh, another cast on whip that I had actually just cast on. I had started a shawl for my mother-in-law. Well, at Stitches, she had, there was a, a booth for a verb for keeping warm, um, yarn company. And she went through and she loved their floating um, base, which is a 70-20-10 alpaca silk cashmere blend. And it it's beautifully drapey, beautifully soft. Like it's, it's very comfortable. And while they had a sample of the, I want to say airy shawl by Mara LaCole Knits. And it's a one skein shawl. And it works so nice with the colorway that she bought. Which I believe the colorway is called Mara. I think the, the whole pattern was for this yarn. But it's a beautiful pattern. I had hand wound the skein for my mother-in-law to start casting it on and working on it and she hadn't yet and then we moved and then she brought it with her when she visited um two weeks ago no a week a week ago so not this past week but the week before that she was here and so I decided that I was going to just cast it on for her and get her started I got to um, the second section and I had to leave and then she had to leave and it was a whole thing. But I really got into the vibe of, I really would love to actually knit this shawl. Like it was quick and easy, like very simple, like mindless knitting. And I kind of needed that other than sleeves and body island. So I'm just like, oh, and Fernanda is doing the across the pond shawl cow again this year. So I do want to take part in that. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to cast on the shawl and do that and be a part of that thin along because I haven't been part of the community in a while. So I just wanted to be added in. But I started it on Thursday this week. Today is Saturday. And I've already almost finished it. So once it's blocked, it's going to stretch out. But I, the main color is some 100% merino yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby that's hand dyed. Uh, but then I paired it with a silk mohair blend, which is just natural white. And it makes it nice and fluffy. And it gives it some nuance and beauty to it, I think. And I have just busted through this pattern. It's, I only have, um, two, Two more eyelet repeat, eyelet repeats, and then one the border mesh section, and then it's done. And this I started this two days ago. I've just been working on it nonstop. And then once it's blocked, it's going to be so like big and drapey and squishy, and I I can't wait. And then send a picture to my mother in law and be like, "How far are you on your shawl?" <sighs> she hasn't worked on it at all. Okay, that is all of my 
whips currently knitting wise. Um, so spinning, I have done a lot. So I don't know if I want to go through all these right now because it's getting really late. I might go through them the next time, but since the last time I did a podcast, I have spun uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ooh, eight, nine, ten, um, comb tops. And they're all three plies. So, and they're all about a sport to fingering weight. So I have really honed in. I feel like I've really started to hone in my skill on spinning really fine and then getting almost a fingering weight out of a three ply, which adds durability and makes them stronger. But I'm loving how all the, the colors are turning out when I spin. So I subscribe to, oh yeah. Uh, nest fibers, which I saw on um, Andrea Mari's podcast. She she also spins and she subscribes to Nest Fibers like monthly subscription that they have. And which one did I? This one was first. So this was April. No. Yes. Yeah, April, May, June, and then I have July in my autumn right here. And so far I'm and they're all different um like breeds of sheep too. So the first one was Falkland, the second one was like BFL, the third one's Falkland, and then the fourth one is Paulworth, I think. And they're all like super fun colorways. But so far I'm really loving that subscription. I don't see me I don't see myself stopping doing that. Even though I have my fiber of the month Paradise Fibers subscription box that I get every month and I have like a build up of all the fiber that I'm getting from them over there. Uh this one was really, really nice. This is from Green, uh, I can't remember the name right now, but this is a Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. And I think Dusty Rose colorway. I think it's Greenwoods or yeah, Greenwood fiber something. But they were also at Stitches and I got this colorway because my mother-in-law really loves pinks and browns and whites all together and so I saw it. I'm like, oh, my mom would really love this. So I bought the fiber braid and then I spun it up. I'm like, I need to make her something out of it. It's it's pretty soft. Um, but I love how the yarn turned out and how it plied together, and then how it it's it's pretty it's got some drape, yeah, it's got some drape. It's really nice. This is the I might have shown this before, but this one is from the fiber braid. It's a hundred percent merino. And it's from the fiber rate that I got from Magda at Magda Knits. And I also love the colors in this one. But I don't know if I've shown it before. It's it's only a partial skein because I used some of it for something. I believe I used part of this skein for my snow pine sweater from wool and pine it might 
yeah, it could be the color work was this in that sweater. And this is a Polworth silk braid that I've had for a really long time. Um, and I just, I, I've, I have maybe might have sold, but I had done this braid in a two ply and it was a lot less blended like it is now. Uh, but this one is a three ply and I feel like it's a, definitely a true fingering weight. <laughs> Uh, but I really like how this one turned out. I want to say that it's almost 400 yards, which is kind of crazy. But this one also has, because it's got silk in it, so it's drapey and nice too. This one is Targi, and I got it from Art and Alchemy Fiber Arts. Um, company while I was at Stitches and I I connected with them and I really loved how they were dyeing their wool tops and things like that and they had a lot of bases that I didn't have and she came over to my booth and she bought some fiber from me and this is I I love Targi. Targi is just like it's astonishing the bounce in the fiber. It's just mind-blowing um but this doesn't have drape at all it is like very it's not stiff it's just it's very light and bouncy and even the strands are like they've got give and pull and spring to every strand and i'm just I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I, and then I have several other braids, but there's the squish. The squish is so nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was this one. Oh, there's so many. So this is 100% alpaca from Happy Hounds up in Washington or Oregon and they have an alpaca farm up there and they breed for fiber fineness. This is a rose gray colorway and it is um, between 17 micron to 14 micron. So it's very, very fine. And so I got four ounces of it and you can just like, <sighs> the, so Targi stays up on its own. Alpaca, especially fine alpaca, it's droopy droop. Very, very drapey. And you can just tell, like, if you're holding up a skein and it just flops over. That is the drape factor. There's not going to be a lot of memory, but it's very soft. And so it'll be really nice for a shawl or something that's supposed to be loose fitting and like flowy. And so can't wait to work with that. And this is also. Uh, this is a three ply that I did from some of my mother in law's alpacas. This is Harmonia, I believe. And she is a dark chocolate brown alpaca, or was a dark, dark chocolate brown alpaca. Um, but this is also a three ply. I think I've just been doing a lot of three plies because I've just been spinning really, really thin. So it's like it has to be a three ply to even really constitute it as a fingering weight. So I need to either spin a little bit thicker or, yeah, this one's very drapey as well. Or just stick with three ply or just continually add plies to get to the thickness that I want. 
All right. I'm also spinning currently on my e spinner is my custom blend of Romney Targi Cross that I had bought off an Etsy seller a year, uh, like two years ago. I sent it to a mill with um, some mulberry silk to blend with it and like wash card and then make it into roving for me. And now I'm going to spin it all, make it into yarn, dye some of it, keep it, some of it keeps, stays white and hopefully put it in my shop and sell it as my custom blend yarn base. We'll see. I don't know. Oh, this video is getting kind of long and I'm getting really tired because it's really late. So I might have to finish the rest of this another time. But in terms of life stuff, I have moved to Utah and I'm loving it so far. I love how much space we have in the house. I love being able to separate myself and really focus on my craft and being creative and like getting those juices flowing and all of that. And then having the boys, ha my two sons have their own space and their own time to play. And like my husband has his own space. It's, it's so nice to be able to spread out. Uh, but yeah, it's, oh my gosh, I, that has to be like the 20th yawn, but I'll leave you here and I'm hoping to pick this up at least once every two weeks, hopefully, and continue on from there. It's already been past my anniversary. A year since doing this but since I've stopped for the last seven months or six months I don't count it as being a full year of podcasting so I want to say from this time till December then it'll be a full year of podcasting so I hope to see you guys again thank you guys so much for watching I'm going to add a little video at the end to tour my craft room, my new craft room. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey everyone. This is my new craft room. We're in the new house right now. Um, we've been here for about a month and a half, but all this space is mine. I have a really cool shelf right here that I keep all my undyed yarn um, for my shop. All of my fiber that I got from Paradise Fibers, Fiber of the Month box, um, undyed fiber. <laughs> all of my um, cotton warp yarn for my loom printer, very important. Um, and then a box of miscellaneous things, artwork. <laughs> And then over here, I have my lovely signage that I use at um, Stitches West. I haven't talked to you guys in such a long time, but yeah, I went to Stitches West. It was great. I should, I'll talk about that in my next podcast, but my loom. Over here, I have brought up my yarn wall with my artwork on top. So I've sort of organized it a little bit. I've got hand spun. Well, those are hand spun. That's from Magda. Hi, Magda. Um, some store-bought yarns, uh, hand dyed, all of mine that are labeled. Uh, and then I put little fairy lights on top. This is a shuttle boat for my loom, but my nice bags that I made. 
Over here is my little bulletin board. I'm gonna put a calendar to kind of time out when I wanna do podcasts, tutorials, and things like that. I haven't gotten that yet, but I have my ribbons from when I placed at the AOA National Fleece Show for some knitted and hand spun yarn, knitted garments and hand spun yarn made from alpaca. My husband, me and my twin sister Brooke at her sixth birthday party um, just put some lovely things. I have my drum carter out, my swift, and then on my e-spinner here I have my custom blended Rambouillet Romney Cross, oh no, Rambouillet Targi Cross, uh, blended with silk that I'm just gonna be spinning up. It's a lot, but I'm gonna finish spinning all of it and then plying it. Some flowers. So this is all for thread, like embroidery thread. And I realized that my bobbin spit on it. So for my spinning wheel. So I'm like, oh, I'll just use it for that for now. But I do have thread that fills that. Watching some uh, Corner of Craft, Hannah, she's dying. Um, I love watching her videos. She's pretty great. A shawl pattern that I'm working on right now. It's called Eerie. Um, it's really simple and really super nice and I love it. But I started it for my mom and I mean, I started the project for my mom to knit and she's still at where I stopped. So, and then I picked it up and I, or I cast it on one of my own and I really love it. Some nice artwork on top here too. Gotta have the scoops, the snacks. You need the snacks. Um, yes, I have three kitchen timers. They're all owls. They were all from different people. They were gifts. I have an obsession with owls, but they were all gifts from different people and they all got me the individual colors. I found that impressive. <laughs> My bookcase with all of my favorite um, books right now. I have some graphic novels at the bottom. They're too deep as well. Like there's a row behind that row. Um, all of my hand dyed fiber braids are all in the middle here. I have some knitting books and crocheting books right here. All my roll legs, it's kind of covered up right now. My stitch markers that I made. My son's <laughs> Mother's Day gift to me this year and I had to put it up there, a flattened wine bottle. And then over here, I've got my signage, Knit and Spin with Brie, Doodlebug Yarn Co. I crocheted this shawl. I cannot tell you what the pattern is, but yes, I crocheted it a really long time ago. I started it for my, my mom mom um, that passed away but I never ended up giving it to her because I never finished it. So I just, I finished, I finished it. I found it while we moved and I finished it and I just put it up there just to remember her. And my sister got me these cute little knitting sheep um, ornaments from England when she was there. I have my wine diva, 14 points, not that many points. <laughs> My lovely knitting, my sitting chair to knit, crochet, craft, whatever. <laughs> That's all the stuff I'm going to be talking about in the podcast that I'm going to be filming because I have not filmed in such a long time. So I have a bunch of crap. <laughs> and then I love in my little ottoman. It's all the fiber that I'm planning on spinning. <laughs> but yeah, this is it. The closet's really large. It also has a window. It's a bit messy in there right now. I'm going to organize it a bit more but it's got sewing machines yarn like that's all these these two totes are filled with all my acrylic and cotton yarns so that's what all this on top is cotton but yes this is all my acrylic and this is dwindled down if you can believe it <laughs> yeah so it's it's a bit of a mess but it has a window in it. It can technically be a bedroom because there's a window. Um, 
But yeah, this is gonna be completely cleared out. I'm gonna have a cutting table right here that's in, currently in the garage and it'll fold out so that I'll be able to have a lot of space for blocking or sewing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I really love my space. I love how I put it together. And I can't wait to start showing you guys what I create while I'm here. While I'm here. Wow. Since moving, it's a lot of, it doesn't feel like it's real yet, but it is, and I'm super excited. All right.